Okay, so our next talk is by Holger and Jelle on reproducible builds. Let's welcome them. So this is Jelle, I'm Holger. We talk about reproducible builds aiming for Bullseye. Bullseye is the next Debian release after Buster, because Buster is frozen and boring. <laughs> <laughs> um, Reproducible builds have the purpose to enable everyone, anyone to reproducibly reproduce identical binary package from a given source. That's what it's all about, and th the rest I save you because I guess most of you have heard it. Um, yeah, we have some project goals. We want to change the meaning of free software also, that it's only free software if it's reproducible, because then you can, then you can only be sure that the binary is really coming from the source. Um, we gave many talks at many conferences, so there's also available with more background information um, and longer ones. And since this is a Debian mini DebConf, we compare, last time we compared from um, DebConf 17 in Montreal, now the, the changes since last year in Taiwan. Um, we finally have a logo, which was a year ago, it was still planned. We had the fourth Reproducible Build Summit in Paris. We'll have another summit this year as well. The location is still to be determined. Um, we are now a software, f software freedom conservancy project um, since last year in August or something. Um, so there's, we have some funding from some companies, some initiatives, and some people of the project are paid from these resources, not everybody. Um, and besides Debian, Arch Linux is about 80%, OpenSUSE 93. Um, we've now included the results from OpenSUSE and Arch Linux into our database, which where we have the Debian results. Then we'll generate web pages similar to the Debian ones in future. Um, since yesterday, Alpine is being tested. KPC YRD has added that. He's not here yet. Um, NetBSD and FreeBSD, the base install is 100% reproducible. The port system we are not testing yet. And the Tails ISO image have been made reproducible. And most OpenWRT images are reproducible as well. Um, and we do a lot of collaboration. And it's really great because when I came here, Yellow was here and gave me this nice sign, which is there. And it's lighting, it's green because the Jenkins maintenance job is successful. It will turn red if it's not successful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does my microphone does work? Does it? Second. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm here for, I'm happy to be here, by the way. Holger invited me so I, I could join uh, the reproducible build sprint this um, week. And we got actually got some work done uh, to further get us in nicer in the reproducible built website and into the testing infrastructure. Um, so at the moment, in the test uh, uh, framework, which just builds two packages and then compares the results, we are about 80% reproducible. Uh, and our thing is a bit different from Debian. We have three repositories, oh, well, actually four. And core is our main, it's like, like the most important repos uh, repository. It's 85% uh, rep uh, reproducible. And we are aiming to first get that 100% reproducible and then work our way around to the other reproducible, uh, to the other repositories because they are larger. Um, but uh, the test framework is nice, but in real life things are different. So when we actually started uh, testing if a, a package we have in a repository can be reproduced uh, using the build info file which we have in our package. We uh, found out that uh, files we uh, saved the file size of a package in the package and on uh, different file systems you will get a different uh, file size re report if you just use du. So that was an interesting uh, issue. We also had to do uh, some infrastructure changes. So we also had to have a build info file, which uh, 
contains all the packages uh, or we have installed from building and for Arginix you have some flags and options you can give with a build so we also also have to record those we also uh, already kept an archive of all the older packages and we needed to um, make tooling to uh, be sure that we don't remove packages from the archive which we need to rebuild packages otherwise we have a, an unreproducible package because the old dependency is not there um, yeah and we also created a tool uh, which reproduces which takes a repos uh, repository package and then uh, try uh, builds builds it again and then compares it and we are still having to fix a lot of packages because uh, which are for example are already fixed in package uh, in Debian or uh, because in Debian if if something records the um, the timestamp or uh, puts a date in the into the binary uh, you can usually give it as a build option you have, like use the uh, the, the timestamp of the change log in our things we don't have a change log so we have to uh, fi fix those packages in a different way and we have some packages which Debian doesn't have so we ha still have more to fix um, and something we actually got done this week was uh, getting JSON output from for Arch Linux. Uh, Debian already has it because the, uh, and we will soon integrate this on our web page. So if you view a package, then you can see in a test framework if it's reproducible. This will hopefully then give the uh, incentive for people to say, hey, why isn't this reproducible? Let's fix it. So that was the short update on the art status. For me, it's interesting oh. to see the things. There are some things they implement the same way, and sometimes they find different solutions. And I find this co interesting in this co collaboration to see how different solutions then evolve and which becomes better. It's a really nice aspect. Um, Buster, we have this in policy. That's also that is new, or that was already maybe last year. Um, we now have Debian installer images um, where in the last three months lots of progress was made and then the, there was the patch which thought to be reproducible and then was something found on the builds again. So there's another fi um, fix which is still missing which might not get into the uh, Buster release but into the Buster 1 if in the first point release. But it looks like we can have reproducible DI images with the release of Buster. And once we have them, we can look at the, um, the big CDs or the, the full CDs. Um, I've also looked at this graph again. This is the patches we've sent since 2014. Uh, yeah, since 2014. And it's, there's 2014 on the left, and this is 2,500 bucks with reproducible builds patches filed. And except for 380, all of them were applied. So that if somebody wants to do a big NMU campaign, you have 380 bucks to take, but not six or 800, which are what I was thinking. So that is quite some time ago that we had more. Um, what else is missing? We have this problem with GCC that it embe embeds the build pass in the object. So you have the user home directory in this case uh, in the build pass. We have this patch, but it's not been accepted by upstream for Buster, and maybe it will not get it for Bullseye, because we just used the workaround to rebuild in the same pass, and we need GCC to be fixed, and for um, adding this patch might not be the best thing, so we just say for the moment, rebuilds have to be done in the pass where it was originally built. That's going to happen? Mm. Is this need somebody to drive that? Because the GCC didn't like the way the patch was implemented, so they want something else. They don't dislike the idea, but the implementation. LLVM has something implemented, and we basically lack somebody who can drive this. Like, I'm, I'm not good enough in C to talk, no. <laughs> so that is something. But it's the workaround is so simple, so it's okay. Let's do something else. <laughs> but if you want to tackle a hard problem, 
There's one. <laughs> um, yeah, and Debian is wrong. Everybody misunderstands the graph. We are not at 93 percent. <laughs> um, we are um, because that is in theory we just do the CI test and we don't compare against the Debian archive. And there's some blocking box blocking bugs which I'll present now which cause this somehow. So <coughs> this is this difference between theory and practice. 93% is a lie. On March 5th, I sent a mail to Debian Devil where we only had 54% of the packages distributed from FTP Debian org where we managed to do a rebuild. Um, now we are down to 31%. <laughs> and you will ask me why, and I have to say I don't really know why yet. Um, there's 24%, so 6,800 source packages have not been uploaded since December 2016 when the change was in dpackage um, to, to sort the uh, archive elements in a reproducible deterministic way. And uh, everything uploaded before and not been in mute, been in a mute since then um, is unreproducible. And I'm not sure if I or we should do 6,000 or whatever uploads of packages we don't use and just <laughs> re-upload with this. We need to discuss this with the release team. I think I would need to drink beer with Evo later. Um, you're fine then. Um, this problem is mostly or is biting the security team um, because people it's a detail, we don't have that much time. Um, bin and MUs are generally also problematic um, for backups, because M, M times and R sync. Um, so maybe we should change the way bin and MUs are done, though um, we are now able to reproduce bin and MUs. So it's not they are not unreproducible per, per se, but they cause other issues. That's what we learned the last year. And this mass rebuild is this bug I already mentioned. Then we have the problem that the build info files are not exported outside of FTP master. They are exported to COSIA, Debian org, but that's only, again, Debian developer accessible machines. We have workarounds for this bug now. Um, then we, don't, we also want them to be in the archive. That doesn't happen yet. And for the security um, builds, the build info files are only synced with the point release so that they are also only available after months, and we should fix this somehow. It also affects LTS. And then we have build info files. We made this hack that they are available on build info Debian net. And then I created build info Debian net. Um, build info Debian net allows submissions of build info files from everyone. So, and then there has a downside. You go there and ask for the build info file for whatever this package, this version, and it gives you 20 files or something or more, and you, which is the one for the FTP archive. So I created FTP, a build in for Debian net, which is just the FTP view like it's on Kokia. There's a build, it's, um, build date based, so I created a link farm to have a pool structure. Um, so you can just go there and get whatever the build info file for this package, this version. Um, but this is Debian net, and this should really be a Debian org machine providing these build info files in the long run. Um, it's not that many files. It's a million files in total for the archive, which is 12 gigabyte file size and 4 gigabyte of links. <laughs> the same amount of links, obviously. Uh, not, yeah, of course we keep them. Then upshot maybe worn. That would be good for bullseye. If a package is unreproducible, up throws a warning. But really, the goal is not to install or run unreproducible software. And then there's also the question, what does that mean? And which rebuilder do I trust? So in total, what Lucas just presented is way better than this up warning there. It's, but it's also more complicated to design. Um, we have now, for test reproducible builds, we have the results saved in a common database. We, from that, we generate JSON for Debian, Arch Linux, OpenWT, and Alpine. OpenSUSE creates their own JSONs, and we just import it. We still want to do shared node and cross-distro links. This is sadly something I talked too many years about. 
And we want also want to do two kinds of tests. At the moment, we have this CI test where we build software twice and compare it against each other. But what we really want to do, we want to compare, we want to try to match the, what's provided by the project's um, FTP or whatever server. Because it's nice to do these CI builds, but we really want to see whether we can reproduce the package people are using. Um, this is from last year. Um, the last thing I would not write anymore today, because Buster is now coming, and maybe we get better than this. Um, bu a bullseye is coming. It's really far away. We can still do anything. We just need to do it. And this is bullseye. <laughs> And that was the logo uh, Hans Christoph Steiner chose for his Android talk at FOSDEM 16. Um, I liked it very much and I still like it. Though the new logo is great as well. That's probably better representation. So thank you for taking these updates for your interest and for your contributions. Thanks, Holger and Jelle. Um, we have time for some quick questions. Uh, please line up at the microphone. How many toolchain patches are there left in the Jenkins CI artificial setup? Zero. That's cool. <laughs> we used to modify Debian packages, but so mostly since D packages in, we had. Camel have had some tests there in our infrastructure, but nothing serious, and that's removed now. The patch has been taken, so there's nothing left. We used to have a patch GCC, but we stopped doing that. You used that in the big news section. Well, it was news already a year ago. Yeah, no, but that's no news compared to last year. Oh, okay, Any further questions? We'll be here for more days. <laughs> Grab them. You said Arch Linux has some packages that are not in Debian. How is that possible? Because so we we are less strict. We we don't have an Arch Linux policy, uh, which is comparable to the Debian policy regarding free software. I and <laughs> <laughs> so we al also package Steam, for example, which is I'm I'm not, and we're not sure even how we're gonna handle those things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Hmm. There's also Arch has this div uh, what this is the Arch Linux repository and the Arch user repository, and that's not Arch officially, as I understand. That's true, yeah. And uh, the Arch user repository has way more packages than Debian. But those are not built. so you Yeah, they are not tested by us, because the no. same with Contrib and non-free for us. There might be some dragons in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I do believe we have packages which are not in Debian. It's but true. I don't have a list. But soon as we ma 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 if we get the uh, the package comparison pages which compare the reproducibility between Debian arts it will be e and open source it will be easier to find out One but but naming is an issue there because another triviality yellow also used this weekend to package pacman the arch package ma manager <laughs> so we can also now enjoy pacman on debian the real pacman <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if there's no further questions, then let's thank the speakers again. <laughs>